This video is going to show you how you can build an MPLS VPN environment quickly and easily using the automated configuration capabilities within Viral. We're going to start off building our MPLS VPN environment using a typical kind of layout. Here we have a CSR1000V acting as our route reflector. Our XRV devices are going to be our P nodes. And our iOS devices are going to be our PE nodes. So you can see we're building up the connectivity. And now we're going to add in a set of CE nodes. Again, iOS V devices as our CE nodes connected up at the edges. Now we're going to be using our CSR as our route reflector for our PE nodes. Our P nodes in the middle there are not going to be participating in BGP because they're just P nodes. So we're actually going to turn BGP off by selecting the disabled function from the drop down menu. There it is. We need BGP on these other devices. So we're going to be setting our CSR as our route reflector. So we set it to RR, and we're going to set a cluster value of 10. There we go. Now we need our PE devices to be members of our route reflector uh, environment. So they're going to be set up as route reflector clients, RRCs. So again, we're picking from the menu, setting the value to 10. And when the auto configuration is then run, those will be set up. Now, these devices are going to be our CE nodes. So we're going to put them into different AS numbers. So here you can see we're setting 65,001, 65,002, 3, and 4, respectively. So they're in a different AS number because these are our CE nodes. OK, almost done. But now we need to put them into a VRF. So this is being set on the CE node. We're defining which CE devices are members of the VRF, the VRF name red, and which devices are going to be a member of the VRF, the VRF name green. So we're setting this as a tag on the CE nodes. Now, the automated configuration engine knows that because these are directly connected devices, it then has to be configured with the appropriate VRFs, red and green. And those sessions will then be advertised through to our route reflector. So we're building the configuration now. So now we're going to take a look at our visualizations. And we'll take a look at OSPF. And now we see one contiguous area. So that's area zero. We can take a look at our IBGP setup. So we can see those nodes in the middle are not connected because they are not participating in BGP. But there we can see our route reflector clients and our route reflector. If we take a look at the eBGP setup, so we can see our connections from our CE devices to our PE devices. Take a look at LDP. So here we can see all the devices in the middle now participating. When we take a look at the VRF view, we can now do some filtering to actually see which devices are members of the VRF. So there we have VRF green. We can see the options there, so green or red. So we can then say, right, give me red. And again, we can see the appropriate members that are participating in that particular VRF. So now we're going to flip back and take a look at the configurations that have been created. So select our node, clicking on configuration, and here we can see the resultant config. So we can see the definition for the VRF green and also for VRF red. And if we look a little bit further down, 
there are a couple of loopbacks that are created, again done automatically, one for red, one for green, which are then going to be used. If we carry on, we can then see here we have uh, MPLS, so the MPLS IP command for enabling LDP. And when we take a look at the BGP configuration, here we can see, again, the VPN being advertised and LDP being turned on there. So a P node, MPLS only, or MPLS LDP rather, only, no BGP. And when we take a look at our route reflector, here we can see, again, the sessions going from the route reflector to all of the PE nodes enabling the VPN v4 address family. Out at the edge, it's eBGP only. So here we can see the two sessions, one to each of the PE nodes. And this just looks like a regular eBGP session, which is what we'd expect. Okay, so let's start the simulation. So I've started the simulation, let all the various machines boot, the configuration apply, and the routing protocols then settle down and let the VRFs form. Okay, so we're logging in, and we're gonna take a look at our route reflector. So here we can see our BGP sessions are all up and established, and we have prefixes exchanged. And if we take a look at the VPN v4 address family, again, we can see the sessions are up and prefixes exchanged. Now we're taking a look at the actual prefixes themselves. And we want to take a look at C1 prefix in particular. So popping in the IP address, and there we can see the route entry, where it came from, the source IP, and also which one of these two prefixes, the two advertisements, which one was selected as best. There we can see the different AS numbers that we configured earlier all coming through as we would expect. So now we're gonna take a look at our PE node. So we've logged in to iOS v3. Again, we're taking a look at the BGP session. So we can see, there we are. Now notice there are only three sessions here, not two. One from each of the CE devices and also one from our route reflector. Okay, so we won't see anybody else, just our route reflector. So that's all normal and expected. And again, we can see all the various prefixes coming through with the best paths selected. And we can see that for VRF red and for VRF green. So now we're going to take a look at MPLS LDP. So we're showing the command, and we can see our neighbors, and we check the IP addresses on the diagram there. We can see those IP addresses are those that we're seeing in the command output. We can take a look at the label bindings. So these are the exchanged labels for the various prefixes. So we can see all of that. And if we show a tracer out, nope, that's actually a typo. So it's tracer out MPLS IPv4 and our target prefix, including the subnet mask. There we go. Now, something strange there, there's nothing being returned in the middle, yet our traffic got through. Well, why is that? Well, by default, MPLS OAM is not enabled. So I'm actually going to turn that on using the terminal multiplexer function. So I'm actually logging in to all four of our P nodes simultaneously. And then I'm going to use the Tmux function, the terminal multiplexer, there it is, to turn on MPLS OAM. So logging in, again, is all four simultaneously, and issuing the command MPLS space OAM and then, because this is XR, commit to turn on that function. And now we're going to go back and we're going to issue that tracer out. In a moment, there we go. And here we can see the difference. Now we're seeing labels being returned. Now we can actually turn that MPLS OAM function on automatically at the topology level by setting this field MPLS enable OAM. 
Okay, so now let's take a look. Add another set of devices. So we're just closing up those consoles. Okay, so we're going to take a look at our CE node. And here we can see the prefix coming through. So if we take a look, this will appear just as a regular eBGP peering session and regular eBGP prefix. So now when we're going to do our trace route, I'm going to source it from my loop back. And because we've got MPLS OEM enabled, we're seeing the labels being returned in that trace route output. So we can see the complete stack as it travels from one side of the network to the other side of the network. Thing to check on the P node, or the, sorry, the PE node is the VRF routing table. So we can see, so show IP route VRF, VRF red, and VRF green.